here's what's going on today. I got a uh, 1950, I think it's a 1956 RCA Whirlpool. It's a 19 cubic foot upright freezer. This freezer is a model. I can get down here where you can see the tag. It's a model YV19. And right there's a serial number NN22620. I've had this freezer probably 20, 21 years. I drug it out, uh, actually found it in the garbage on the side of the road. The door was taken off of it and it was just sitting on the side of the road. And the only thing I actually found wrong with it was this door gasket. And at that time I had a roll of the material and I just went ahead and replaced the door gasket. Did a pretty good job. I got a real nice a real nice turn on that corner but not as good on this one it needed to be stretched just a little bit more right there but it seals up good so I've kind of left it alone but for all these years that I've had this freezer it's been a really good freezer and uh, I've only had one problem with it uh, since that time the capacitor the start capacitor went out on the compressor and I had to replace it but now we've got a whole new problem now if you notice the freezer has no controls you don't see any controls there's no knobs no on and off nothing these old freezers back when these were made they were preset from the factory and this little unit right down here in the corner right here is actually your thermostat and the capillary runs up through behind this cover and it comes out right here and goes into a tube it's snapped to this shelf okay and the problem I've got is my freezer is getting too cold I noticed several months ago that it seemed like it was running an awful lot and it's actually running long enough that this thing froze solid 80 proof whiskey so we've got to have a thermostat so I'll show you what I got here nobody can look this thing up nobody can look up this freezer uh, I'd hope maybe to at least find some part numbers uh, maybe where the part numbers had changed over the years and be able to cross-reference and search places like eBay and Amazon and places online to see if I might could actually find the original thermostat or one like it sitting on a shelf somewhere but I didn't have any luck so I went down to the local appliance store in Huntsville really good folks down there at A1 Appliance in Huntsville you can order from them online uh, I'll share some links with you after a while if you ever need appliance parts they're pretty good they used to be able to look up parts for this older stuff because they actually still have the microfish system that they used to use with all the uh, part numbers and and diagrams and things for the appliances you know out of the 40s and 50s and things like that but what we have here is generic universal freezer thermostat 
and because of the distance that my capillary travels I got one that has a 71 inch capillary so what I'm gonna do today I'm gonna let you all see me take this freezer apart and we're gonna replace the thermostat we're gonna retrofit it with with this universal thermostat and hopefully get our freezer where we can keep it set at a zero degree I'm not really sure what temperature 80 proof whiskey would freeze at but it's way colder than the freezer needs to be and I've kind of noticed that my electric bill has been a little bit higher over the course of this winter than it should be because I actually heat with gas and uh, I know I'm not running the dryer that much so I think part of that is actually coming from this freezer a lot of times when uh, I get home in the evening or come home or sometimes when I catch it running I'll uh, reach right up on the door and hit that thermostat with a screwdriver or something. It'll shut off and it'll stay off for a long time. So what we're going to do is we're going to thaw this thing out. We're going to clean it out. I've already pulled all the food out and stuffed it in between the couple of the refrigerators and, and some in a cooler. So it should stay good and solid through the course of this repair because we should have this done today so I've got I've got stuff stuffed in my 1951 this is a 1951 International Harvester refrigerator and as crazy as it may sound I got in trouble with my grandmother my grandmother was so mad when I was nine years old, I come dragging this refrigerator down the road, laid over on a little red wagon. An uh, elderly lady gave me this thing and $5 for cutting her yard. And that was when I was nine years old. And I've had this thing and kept it ever since. It's been in every place that I've ever lived from the time I moved out when I was 18 years old so but that's what's going on right now we're fixing to play freezer repair well one more thing it's pretty cool this old freezer actually has a drain you can see it right there it's starting to thaw out and water it's draining. I got. I've got to pop my little plunger out. But there's ice and stuff stuck on it. I got a pan up under. Up under. Yep. Yeah, it's starting to drain now. Get it up here where I can get a hold of it. Oh, we're not successful. pan stuck under it so we'll have to keep an eye on that make sure we keep it empty I guess this will be a good time to sweep out from under the freezer and clean out from under it too so but we'll be back we're a couple hours into this thing and my patience is kind of wearing thin and this is all the ice we've got left that's where it usually accumulates the most is up at the top so it's defrosting slowly but surely I'm ready to get in here and take this thing apart but I really would like for it to finish defrosting I gotta figure out how to open up 
open up this thermostat, I believe. Yep. I think there's a screw right there. Yep. I kind of want to get a look. This thing's dripping this cold water on my head. I want to get a look in here and see what we're dealing with wire wise if I could see yep I see and I see three wires and the thermostat that we're putting in here only has two so we're gonna have to try to figure out what this is all about I think one of them may go up into the door because this freezer actually has a warning it has a warning that if it if it gets warm it lights up this this emblem in the door I think it would be really cool the thought crossed my mind today I think it would be really cool to put an LED in here and wire it up where it stayed lit as long as the freezer had power that that light would stay on. I think it would be cool. But as it is now, it, it only it only comes on when the when the freezer is warm, when it's not down to temperature. So I kind of see see the wires in the thermostat there. I guess we we'll, I need to get my own volt and ohm meter out so we can trace down where everything goes. And uh, I guess we're going to let this thing defrost out some more and then get back to it. Okay, we got the freezer. She's all completely defrosted. And we got it wiped out and cleaned up. Wiped out from under it a little bit. We got our, still got our cover off our thermostat, our wires exposed. We got three wires. Right now, what I'm going to work on, I'm going to see if I can get you set up to where you can see, is I'm going to start trying to get this trim piece off this cabinet, which is a concern because I really don't want to break it. And this stuff is. Fifty years, over fifty years old. So it should just snap in. Yep. One piece. Oh, look at there! Look at there! Here it comes! Here it comes! All right. There we go. Man. We only left one clip behind. Uh, maybe that clip is supposed to stay. Okay, well, we have exposed. We have now exposed our thermostat capillary, which is right here. And I think that we will be able to easily fish that up through there. We're going to have to remove this little trim plate right there so we can work that out from behind. And also, right here, you can see where it snaps into this tube on the bottom of the shelf. And that tube is not actually part of the thermostat itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to get right here and real easy with a screwdriver we're going to pop these little clips off we're just going to throw them down in the bottom of the freezer and hopefully we don't drop none or send none flying or lose them okay there's another one all right and i see three of them so right there's our third now listen folks, if you got an antique refrigerator 
or one of these old freezers that don't defrost itself, don't take an ice pick or a screwdriver to it, okay? Just don't do it. It's not worth it, okay? Because you can ruin it. All right, now we need to get this out from behind here. This is kind of, y'all, this is difficult to hold a camera and do this. I'm going to have to set you down. Let me see if I can tilt this to where you can see where I'm at. trim piece for the front of the shelf that's what's holding us here we go there we go that's what's got us okay now look at there and we should be able to slide that right out of the right out of the tube look at there okay all right, so now we got our tube off, our shelf. That gets that free. So let's see about getting that cover off. Get my other screwdriver. <clears throat> we need this off so that we can fish this capillary out of there. out from behind and I believe it appears yep yeah, we've got some excess up in there and I've got to get figure out where the excess is there we go folks there's our capillary now we've got our thermostat capillary out of the freezer so we're gonna have to fish it down it's gonna fish right down through here and I hope I'm really hoping that I don't have to take any more of that stuff off so I'm going to pause this video just a minute. I got two screws down here that I'm going to have to take out to get the mounting part of this thermostat out. We're going to go ahead and disconnect our wires. And uh, I have determined that this wire goes into the door. So I'm pretty sure that that wire has something to do with the lighted emblem in the front. And these two wires feed back to our control center. So I'm pretty sure that's just the switching wires for the compressor on and off. So I'm going to pause the video while I go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that stuff loose. Okay, I'm back. Got my little screw gun here. We're going to go ahead and uh, pop this mountain bracket loose. I think y'all have heard me complain about this little drill before. It's, it's about had it. I'm going to have to invest in me another one. Right now it's battery needs charged. It just got charged the other day. Okay, 
there's our thermostat loose from its mounting hardware so now that we got that done let me go ahead and I'm going to disconnect these wires this third wire is kind of a little bit of a monkey wrench I think I know what it's for okay but the primary importance here is that we neither need the freezer we need the freezer to run and not run too long okay and if you're trying to replace a thermostat on a refrigerator or a freezer folks please listen to me this little capillary tube right here that goes to your thermostat this thing is very important you don't want to break that so when you're handling it and you're having to bend it be very gentle with it because you can destroy it okay you can't really see what I'm doing okay so what I'm doing is I'm fishing this old capillary tube out from behind Okay. All right, we've got it out. Right there's your capillary. Now what happens, what happens in this capillary is when it's up in the freezer, it's actually got a preset temperature or an adjustable thermostat has a range. Okay? And uh the the capillary has something in it similar to like refrigerant and its internal pressure its pressure will change based on the temperature so as the pressure changes once it gets you know to a certain certain uh, point it causes this thermostat to open the contacts shutting off the compressor and when the box starts to warm up, the pressure inside this tube will change yet again. And after it reaches a certain point, it'll cause the contacts inside this thermostat to close, thus turning back on the compressor. And the cycle goes on and on. But this little thermostat here, she's probably close to 60 years old and it just doesn't function properly anymore it just it won't cut off when it's supposed to that's the problem so anyway we got the old one out I'm gonna pause the video right here and I'm gonna go ahead and get the new thermostat in here and uh, start getting it uncoiled and fishing it up into place now I gotta figure out how and where I'm gonna mount it so I'm going to look at all that stuff and uh, then we'll come back. All right, this is all the different hardware that come with our new thermostat. This is, you know, this is universal hardware for mounting it in various different applications. I'm not really sure what I want to do. I kind of had thought to just mounting it back to the the original plate but I don't know. I could go right up under the edge of this cabinet somewhere right here and mount it and actually put the knob on it right here to where you could kind of you could change it and adjust it pretty easy but what I'm going to do now We've got to uncoil, uncoil our capillary. And you want to be really, 
gentle and easy with this. You don't want to you don't want to kink it. You don't want to double it over, folding it, because if you break it and it loses that internal charge, it will not be any good. I hope this thing's going to be long enough. it to this old one. So it ain't looking real promising here, folks. Now, we got quite a bit of difference there. I'm not sure if this is going to work at all. I may be going back to the parts house. should be just long enough if I can mount if I can mount this thermostat over here in this corner it may be just long enough so let me see if I can fish the capillary up through there and see what we got well I had to go shopping here's another one Apparently, the cold control that we had that we bought Wednesday, somebody put the wrong control in the right box. Mm. Let me tear it up. So here's our new one. This one has an 84 inch capillary yep 84 inch capillary so it's about 20 inches too long so we can work with too long we can't work with too short so next step we gotta start fishing this thing up through the cabinet so we can get this freezer back online and just like I said before, be real gentle with these things when you're uncoiling them. And I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the excess underneath the cabinet. So there it goes. Just gonna uncoil it as we pull it up. Try to make it as straight as we can. Now that we're up here, we've got to go over and it's going to have to come in up under this shelf. So, let me see where I can see if I can get you set up somewhere. this out bring this over in 
here. Alright, now right here's our tube. And what we've got to do is we've got to slide this capillary up inside of this tube as far as it will go. And then we've got to snap it back in up under the shelf where it goes. There's one clip. And there's another clip. And there's the final clip. Okay, now we can snap this piece back. Now I have got to work this and we're going to have to sort of bend it right here because we need it to snap right back into that rubber boot just like that. seated and it's all the way in there we can now put back this bracket Now what I've got to do is I've got to look at these universal brackets here and I've got to decide exactly how I want to mount this thermostat down here under this freezer. So let me look at that for a couple minutes and figure this out and uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit. I got some of my trim snap back in and I got the thermostat mounted I had to use the little volt ohm meter here and uh, check the wiring but you can see I got the thermostat mounted right there in the knob I got plenty of clearance for the for the door and let's see if we can get down in here you can see where I've got the wires hooked up right there and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get some I'm gonna get some zip ties and kind of strap these wires down to where they're not flopping around in there 
and the third wire that we had was actually for it was for the light because the light burns dim when the freezer gets above a certain temperature and uh, it was doing that by some type of feedback through that wire to be perfectly honest with you I'm not completely sure how all that works but we've got our light working so now we're going to see if we can get this back in here without without breaking anything there ah there we go we got a clip off that's what's messing with us clips off no no okay there we go all right now we're gonna just slip this back in but before we can slip it back in I've got to put this trim piece back on down here that piece of trim back in okay I got my I got my baskets sitting right there on the back porch so let me get my baskets and put them back in here and clean up some of the mess here and uh, we'll plug it up and see if it runs okay well I've got my racks back in this is a uh, this is a really nice freezer. I like this freezer. It's got these rollout baskets. You can stack stuff in. The upright freezer is just so much easier than a chest type. So it's got all these racks in the doors to hold stuff, and they snap out. It's really really a well made freezer so we fixing to plug it up and see if it runs Sounded like she fired up to me. All right, I'm gonna set this, set our cold control about midways. 
I never did get a tie strap and strap those wires. So I'm going to end the video right here. I'm going to load my food and stuff back in it. I got this thermometer. I'm going to set this thermometer in here on a rack. We're going to have to give this thing probably 24 hours of uh, 24 hours time to settle out and you know see what our temperature is running. We want it to run about zero somewhere in and around zero so we'll have to play with the thermostat until we get it get it there but I'm going to load everything back in it now and let it start cooling down and I'll do another video an update on it here after we get everything settled out but there you have it today's project repair the 1956 RCA Whirlpool 19 cubic foot upright freezer I hope you all enjoyed remember like and subscribe for more future videos coming thanks for watching okay I lied we're going to do one more update on the freezer. I checked it earlier. I have caught it off. It has cycled off, but it's back on and running right now. You can hear it running. But earlier, and it still is, minus five. Just going up quick because I got the door open. But, I believe we can call the freezer fixed. One more thing. If you have a freezer, and it's not in your house, if it's in your garage, or an outbuilding, I want to give you a little helpful tip. Especially, this is especially true with the newer freezers. Your freezer, your condenser coils are in the cabinet. And when the freezer's running, if you'll lay your hand alongside the cabinet and even the top of the freezer, you'll find that it gets warm to the touch. That's because the coils that get rid of the heat that the freezer pulls out are within the cabinet. So especially if your freezer is located in in an area that gets really warm like a garage or something keep the area around the cabinet free don't jam it right up against something or, or a wall or stack boxes around it I have some things sitting up on top of my freezer uh, primarily because that's the best place I had to put them but the top of my freezer is not completely covered and it's in a this freezer sitting in a room that I air condition when it's warm it's got its own little air conditioner in here but if you want extra life out of your freezer and have fewer problems with it especially if you have got one of these newer freezers which you know don't tend to last far beyond the warranty period Make sure you keep the area around the cabinet clear. You know, let the thing breathe. If you can ventilate the area around it or put it in a climate controlled atmosphere such as such as a house. Uh, I got this little cabinet right here sitting pretty close to the freezer, but I did make sure to leave at least a one inch air gap in there so that the freezer can breathe. But just thought I'd kick that little bit of information out. I hope y'all enjoyed this uh, repair video on fixing a 1956 RCA Whirlpool freezer. Y'all have a blessed day. Take care.